In this lesson, we'll learn how to play sound in music using the Audio API. On the screen is a text label. We'll write code that will allow us to tap the label in order to play or pause the sound. In order to play a sound, we'll need to create an audio handle. Then we'll call the load sound method or load stream method of the audio object to assign a sound file to the handle. Since the playback of audio files is the same regardless if they were loaded with load sound or load stream, we'll use load sound. The argument that load sound takes is the path to the file we wish to load. In case you're wondering about the differences between the two methods, Load sound will load the entire audio file in the memory before it plays. This means that it is very resource intensive and may cause delays in your app when the sound is initially loaded. Load stream, on the other hand, will play your audio file bit by bit by streaming it into the app. The problem with this is that it may be a bit less responsive than load sound, which will fire immediately when loaded. As a general rule, for sound effects, UI sounds, and very short sounds, use load sound. Otherwise, use load stream. Let's create a tap event listener on the status text object so we can control the playback of the audio file. When coding an audio player, you'll need to be aware of the current status of the audio playback. To track this, we'll create a property called status on the status text object. The initial status of the app will be waiting. The other two possible statuses are playing and paused. Let's code conditional logic that will test the current status of the app. If the status of the app is waiting, then we're ready to play the audio file. For the first argument, we'll pass in the audio handle we created earlier. For the second argument, we'll pass in a table of properties that will affect audio file playback. There are many properties we can pass here, so I'll only show you a few of the more important properties that you can set. First, let's set the channel the audio file should play on. Note that there are a maximum of 32 channels that can be used at one time. This means that you can only have up to 32 sounds playing at once. Next, we'll set the number of times the sound file should loop. If you want it to loop infinitely, pass in negative one. If you don't want it to loop at all, leave this property out. Then we'll add a fade in so that the audio file fades in over half a second. The argument here is milliseconds. Finally, we'll define a callback function for when the sound file is done playing. This is very similar to creating a callback function for a transition. Within the callback function, we'll unload the sound file from memory and nil out its reference. This is done to ensure that the sound file is completely removed from memory and we don't inadvertently create a memory leak. To remove the audio file, we'll call the dispose method of the audio API. Then we'll pass in a reference to the handle that we wish to dispose of. The current audio handle can be accessed as the dot handle property of the event object. Finally, we'll nil out the handle and set the status to nil so that the user can no longer use the audio player. We'll also set the display text to reflect that the sound has been unloaded. We'll set e.handle to nil to make sure it's garbage collected. And then we'll set the status to playing and the text object to sound unloaded. Now that the sound has begun playing, we'll set the status and text to playing. Note that we'll do this outside of the play method. We'll move on to the other statuses. If the current status is playing, we'll want to pause the sound. For the argument, we'll pass in the channel to pause, here, one. 
Then we'll set the status and text properties to reflect the sound is currently paused. If the status is paused, we'll resume the sound to have it play again. As with pausing, we'll pass the channel to resume. Finally, we'll set the status and text to reflect the sound as playing. Let's take a look at our app. We'll tap the text object to start the sound. We'll tap it again to pause it. Now we'll let the sound complete and it will unload. There are other functions to affect playback and they are implemented much in the same way that pause and resume are. See the Corona API documentation for more info. This ends our lesson on playing sound and music.